In this video, we're going to be talking about how to set up a partial fractions decomposition and two different ways to solve for the constants in that decomposition. And we're going to be working with two different integrals. The first one is the integral of 5x plus 1 divided by quantity 2x plus 1 times quantity x minus 1. We're going to start with this example and then we're going to do a second example with this integral. So starting over here, we notice that we have two linear factors in our denominator, right? Both of these factors are first degree factors, meaning that the degree of the highest exponent is one, right? We have two x to the first power here, x to the first power, and x to the first power here. So these are first degree x variables, which means they're linear factors. And when we have linear factors, we know that our partial fractions decomposition is going to include single constants. So here's what that looks like. We're going to write out our decomposition, leaving the numerator here and the denominator as is. This is always the left-hand side, so x minus 1. And we're going to set that equal to dividing up our factors. We have 2x plus 1, and we have our second factor, x minus 1. Because these are both linear factors and because they're distinct factors, we can just say a and b. If we have quadratic factors, then we need to have ax plus b or cx plus d. And if we have repeated linear factors, then our decomposition looks different. But the point of this video is just to show you how to solve for the constants a and b. I want to talk about two different methods for finding these constants. So in this case, once we have our decomposition, as you know, we're going to multiply both sides by the denominator from the left-hand side. So we're going to take this and multiply it by both sides of our equation. Of course, on the left-hand side, that's just going to leave us with the numerator because the denominator will cancel completely. And on the right-hand side, we're going to get this 2x plus 1 factor to cancel with this one, and we'll just be left with a times x minus 1. And when we multiply this whole denominator by b over x minus 1, the x minus 1 factor will cancel and we'll be left with b times quantity 2x plus 1. Now at this point, you have two different options to find constants a and b. The method I usually use is the one that we'll talk about first. So this is method number one to find a and b. What I usually do is I multiply out the right-hand side, group like terms together, and then compare coefficients from the left and right-hand side. So that looks like this. We get 5x plus 1 is equal to, distributing the a across the x minus 1, we get ax minus a. And then distributing the b across the 2x plus 1, we get plus 2bx plus b. Now I go ahead and group like terms together. So we're going to look for the same degree x value. So we have x to the first degree term here and an x to the first degree term here. So when we pair those together, we'll get ax plus 2bx. Or if we factor an x out of that, we get a plus 2b times x. So we factored out an x and we've dealt with these two. And then we have negative a and plus b. Those are both constants. So we'll go ahead and say plus negative a plus b like this. And now that we have our right hand side simplified, what we want to do is compare coefficients on both sides. So the coefficient on our first degree x term on the left hand side is 5. On the right hand side, the coefficient on the first degree x term is a plus 2b. So notice here we have x and x, so 5 has to equal a plus 2b. And then we also have this constant on the left, positive 1. That has to be equal to the constant on the right, which is negative a plus b. So by comparing those two, we get a system of simultaneous equations, a system of linear equations that we can use to solve for the constants a and b. So we set a plus 2b equal to 5, and we set negative a plus b equal to 1 by setting these constants equal to one another. Now at this point, we have this system of linear equations that we can use to solve for a and b. This one's fairly easy because we have an a and a negative a here. So if we add the equations together like this, we just add them up and down here, we get a plus a negative a, which is 0, so that cancels. We get 2b plus b, which is 3b, and we get 5 plus 1, which is 6, and that tells us that b is equal to 2. Knowing that b is equal to 2, we can plug it back into either of our original equations. So we'll plug it back into the first one, and we'll get a plus 2 times 2 is equal to 5, when we plug 2 in for b into this first equation. We get a plus 4 equals 5, or a is equal to 1. So we've solved for our constants a and b. This is one method that you can use to find the values of the constants, but there's another method as well. If we go back and we look at 
our equation here that we first got after we multiplied both sides of the decomposition by the denominator from the left hand side. The other method we can do is we can look at each factor and we can figure out what value of x will make that factor zero. So for example, if we look at this factor x minus one, what value can we plug in for x that will make this equal to zero? Well, obviously if we set x equal to one, then we'll get one minus one and that'll be zero. The reason we wanna do that is because if we can get this factor to equal zero, then we'll get zero times a and a will disappear and we'll just be left with b and we'll be able to solve for the constant b. Keep in mind that this method is gonna require us to look at each of our factors. So we know we're gonna be looking at two x plus one and we know we're gonna be looking at x minus one. So we just looked at x minus one and we can say here when x is equal to one, we're gonna plug now one into both sides for x and we're gonna get five times one is five plus one is six. So the left hand side will be six. On the right hand side, we'll get one minus one, which is zero. Zero times a is zero, so that drops away. And then we're gonna get b times three or six equals three b or b equals two when we divide both sides by three. Now if we look at the other factor, if we look at 2x plus 1 right here, and we say, what do we have to set x equal in order for this factor to equal 0? This one isn't quite as simple as our x minus 1 factor, so if you're ever not sure, you can just take this factor and set it equal to 0. So we'll say 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. Subtracting 1 from both sides, we get 2x equals negative 1. And then dividing both sides by 2, we get x equals negative 1 half. So x has to equal negative 1 half in order for this factor to be equal to 0. So we say when x equals negative 1 half, now plugging it into both sides, the left and right hand side of this equation, we'll get 5 times a negative 1 half is going to give us negative 5 halves plus 1 is equal to, here we get negative 1 half minus 1, or a negative 3 halves, so we get negative 3 halves times a, and of course we know that when we plug in negative 1 half here, this 2x plus 1 is going to become 0, 0 times b is 0, so that drops away. Now if we multiply through this whole equation by 2, we'll get negative 5 plus 2 is equal to negative 3a. We'll get negative 3 equals negative 3a, or a is equal to 1. And as you can see, both methods gave us the same result. We got a equals 1 and b equals 2. Which method you use depends on whatever you're most comfortable with. You can use either one. A lot of times this method is faster than this one, but sometimes people are way more comfortable with this method. So just practice both and decide which one you like more, and then go ahead and use that one consistently because it doesn't matter. Now let's look at our second example. We have the integral of 4y squared minus 7y minus 12 divided by y times quantity y plus 2 times quantity y minus 3. So notice here that in our denominator we have three factors. Over here we only had two. So we're going to set up the decomposition in the same way. We're going to say 4y squared minus 7y minus 12 and we're going to divide that by y times y plus 2 times y minus 3. Now even though we have three factors, we have three distinct linear factors. Again, each of these terms contains a first degree y variable. This is y to the first power, y to the first plus two, and y to the first minus three. So because they're all first degree terms and they're all different, we have distinct linear factors, which means that our decomposition is gonna be a over y plus b over y plus two plus c over y minus three. I'm going to follow the same process I followed with the last example, and we're going to go ahead and multiply both sides of this equation by the denominator from the left-hand side. When we do that, we'll just be left with the numerator on the left-hand side because the denominator will cancel completely. On the right-hand side, this y factor will cancel with y and we'll be left with a times y plus 2 times y minus 3. With b, our y plus 2 term will cancel, and we'll be left with b times y times y minus 3. And with c, our y minus 3 term will cancel, and we'll be left with y times y plus 2. Now let's talk about method number 1, where we have undetermined coefficients. We multiply out the right-hand side. So multiplying out the right, we'll get a times y squared minus 3y plus 2y is a minus y minus 6 plus by squared minus 3by plus cy squared plus 2cy. Now if we distribute that a, we get ay squared minus ay minus 6a 
plus by squared minus 3by plus cy squared plus 2cy. And when we group like terms together, we're going to look at our squared terms first. So we have ay squared plus by squared plus cy squared, or a plus b plus c times y squared. And we've dealt with these three. And then we're going to look for our first degree y term. So we have a negative ay, a negative 3by, and a 2cy. So we're going to get plus negative a minus 3b plus 2c times y, and that takes care of these three. And then the only thing left is a minus 6a, so we have minus 6a. Now equating coefficients on both sides, we look at the coefficient on the y squared term, so we have 4 on the left hand side, and on the right hand side we have a plus b plus c. On the left hand side, the coefficient in front of our first degree y variable is a negative 7. We need to make sure to include the negative sign if there is one. And on the right hand side, we have negative a minus 3b plus 2c. And then comparing our constants, we have a negative 12 compared to a negative 6a. So setting those equal to each other, we have a plus b plus c is equal to 4. We have negative a minus 3b plus 2c is equal to negative 7, and we have a negative 6a is equal to negative 12. So obviously the best place to start here is with our third equation. We can solve it easily for a. What we get is a equals 2 when we divide both sides by negative 6. Now knowing that a equals 2, our next step is going to be to plug those into these first two equations to get rid of the a variable because then we'll have two equations in terms of two variables b and c. So if we go ahead and do that, plugging into this first equation, we'll get 2 plus b plus c equals 4, or in other words, b plus c is equal to 2 when we subtract 2 from both sides. And then plugging into the second equation, we'll get negative 2 minus 3b plus 2c is equal to negative 7, or adding 2 to both sides, we'll get negative 3b plus 2c. We had this negative 2, we add it to both sides, and we end up with negative 5. Now we need to cancel a variable when we add these two together or take the difference. So one thing that we can do is multiply through this first equation by 2. When we do that, we'll get 2b plus 2c is equal to 4. The reason that that helps us is because now we have 2c and 2c. And what we can do then is subtract these from one another because when we subtract, we'll get 2c minus 2c, which is 0. So we'll get the c's to cancel that way. We'll get 2b minus a negative 3b, or 2b plus 3b, which is 5b. Our c's canceled, and we get 4 minus a negative 5, or 4 plus 5, which is 9. So we get equals 9. b is equal to 9 fifths. So now we have a value for a and for b. And to find c, we can just go ahead and plug b back into either one of these equations. Let's go ahead and plug it into this one here. Remember, we just had b plus c is equal to 2 before we multiplied through by 2. So plugging in b, we'll get 9 fifths plus c is equal to 2. Multiplying through by 5, we'll get 9 plus 5c is equal to 10. Subtracting 9 from both sides, we get 5c is equal to 1. And then dividing both sides by 5, we get c is equal to 1 fifth. So again, that was method number one for finding our constants. Method number two, just like we did last time, what we're going to be doing is looking at each one of the factors, so we know we're going to have to look at y, y plus 2, and y minus 3, and figure out what we have to set y equal to for each of those to be 0. So let's just go ahead and start with the first one that appears on the right-hand side, this y plus 2 value here. What does y have to be equal to in this factor to get this factor to equal to 0? Well, obviously that's y equals negative 2 because we'd have negative 2 plus 2 would equal 0. So we can go ahead and say when y is equal to negative 2, and notice what's going to happen here. Each of these factors, each of these three factors, appears on the right-hand side twice. Our y plus 2 factor appears with a, and it also appears with c. So setting y equal to negative 2 is going to get rid of a and c, leaving us only with b. So plugging y equals negative 2 in on both sides, we're going to get negative 2 squared, which is positive 4, times 4 is 16. Negative 7 times negative 2 is a positive 14, so we'll get plus 14, and then minus 12 on the left-hand side. Over on the right-hand side, we know that a is going to go to 0, c is going to go to 0, and we're just going to be left with this b term here. So we're going to get b times negative 2, or negative 2b, 
times negative 2 minus 3 or negative 5. Simplifying the left hand side we get 20, 30, 18 is equal to 10b, negative 2 times 5 is positive 10, and then we get b equals 18 over 10, which is equal to 9 over 5, and we can see we got the same answer here for b. Now let's look at the second factor that appears on the right hand side. We already did y plus 2, now let's do y minus 3. So what do we have to set y equal to in order to get this factor to equal 0? Well obviously that's when y is equal to 3 because 3 minus 3 will be 0. So plugging y equals 3 into the left hand side, we'll get 3 squared which is 9 times 4 is 36 minus 21 minus 12 is equal to both this a term here and the b term have the y minus 3 factor, so those will both disappear, and we'll just be left with the c factor here. Plugging y equals 3 into that, we'll get c times 3, or 3c three times 3 plus 2, or 5. Simplifying over here, we're going to get 15 minus 12 is 3, which is equal to 15c, so we get c is equal to 3 over 15, which is 1 fifth and we can see that we got the same value for c. Now our third factor is y, just y on its own. We did y plus 2 and we did y plus 3 and now we're going to do y. So what do we have to set y equal to in order for this factor to be 0? Well obviously it's just y equals 0 so we say when y equals 0, plugging 0 in on the left hand side we're going to get 0, 0 and we're just going to be left with negative 12 and on the right hand side, because the b and c terms both include this y factor, they're both going to disappear and become 0, and a is going to be the only one left. So we're going to get a times 0 plus 2 is 2, times 0 minus 3 is negative 3. We get negative 12 is equal to negative 6a, or dividing both sides by negative 6, a is equal to positive 2, and we can see that we found the same value for the constant a as well. So again, those are two different methods you can use to find the constant. And you're welcome to use either one depending on what feels most comfortable to you. The only thing that I would warn you about is that in this video we dealt with only linear factors, right? Both of these were linear factors and all three of these were linear factors. When you have quadratic factors with partial fractions, you might run into a problem with method number two. And here's why really quickly. If we have in our denominator two factors, let's say x squared minus three and x squared plus one. And now we're looking to make that into a decomposition and solve for the constants. Well, just think about where this is going to go here for a second. Method number one, if we multiply out everything on the right hand side, group like terms together, compare coefficients on the left and right, and solve for the constants, we won't have a problem. But if we're using the second method where we're trying to figure out how to get each of these factors to equal zero, this first one, x squared minus 3, we'll have no problem with because how do we get x squared minus 3 to equal zero? Well, x squared minus 3 equals zero, add 3 to both sides, x squared is equal to positive 3, x is going to be equal to root 3. As a result, we would plug square root of 3 into the left and right hand sides and we would be able to solve for a constant. On the other hand, if we're trying to get this x squared plus 1 factor to equal 0, we say x squared plus 1 equals 0, subtract 1 from both sides, and we get x squared equals negative 1, and now we have a problem because we're trying to take the square root of the left-hand side in order to solve for x, but we can't take the square root of a negative number. So method number two does not work when you have a quadratic factor, which is the sum of this second degree x variable and some constant. So if you have a factor like this, it's quadratic, and these two values here are added together in the binomial term, then method number two, where we talk about setting the variable equal to some value that'll make this factor zero, that won't work. You'll have to use method number one. So when you start a problem like this and you're trying to decide whether or not to use method number one or method number two, just go ahead and take a look at the factors that you have in your denominator. If you have linear factors or if you have quadratic factors which are the difference of two terms, no problem, you can go ahead and use method number two or method number one, they'll both work. But if you have any quadratic factor which is the sum of these two, then you won't be able to use method number two, so start out right from the beginning with method number one and you'll be all set.